Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make raspberry pistachio shortbreads and this is what they look like. On the bottom, we have a buttery crisp shortbread cookie. We're gonna to top that with a powdered sugar glaze and then sprinkle on some freeze-dried raspberries and some pistachio nuts. I mean, not only do they look beautiful, they taste fantastic. So we are going to start by making our shortbread batter. So if you have a stand mixer like I have here, use your paddle attachment, you can use a hand mixer or really, when you're making a shortbread, all you're doing is mixing all the ingredients together. So you could just use a bowl with a wooden spoon. The first thing you will need is three quarters of a cup, which is 170 grams of butter. Have your butter at room temperature. Now you can use either salted or unsalted. My preference is unsalted for a couple of reasons. One, I just like the flavor. And two, I like to control the amount of salt in the recipe. But if you have a salted butter that you like, go ahead and use that. Just leave out the salt that's called for in the recipe. Now, if you live in the States, you may want to try using what is called, it's labeled European style butter. And really what that translates to mean, it has a higher butter fat content, which makes a really nice buttery crisp shortbread. So, I mean, you can use a regular unsalted, but you might want to try that for a treat. Although I find you get spoiled once you start using that butter. So now I'm just going to put this in here and on medium low speed, because like I said, we want a dense textured shortbread, so we don't want to incorporate a lot of air. So I'm going to have my uh, mixer on medium low and I'm just going to beat the butter just until it's nice and smooth. The added advantage of beating your butter just like this on its own, say you didn't take your butter out early enough and it's a little hard, then just beating it like this will soften it. Fast way of doing it. So now I'm going to add a quarter of a cup, 50 grams of granulated white sugar. I'm not adding too much sugar here because we are putting a powdered sugar glaze on top. So I don't want a really sweet shortbread cookie. Again, I'm just doing medium-low speed, just mixing until that sugar and butter are mixed together. Okay. And as always, when you're making a batter, scrape down the sides and bottom of the bowl as much as you need to get it all mixed together. So, in a separate bowl, I have one and a half cups, which is 195 grams of all-purpose flour, plain flour. To that, I'm adding a half a teaspoon, two grams. I'm using kosher salt, and I'm just gonna whisk. You can just use a fork, spoon, mix that together. Like I said, if you use the salted butter, I would just leave out the salt. Now, this recipe will give us about um, 26 cookies, so, if you want lots, you can just easily double this recipe. So put that in there. And I'm going to start on, you know, again, low speed. Do it gradually because I don't want that flour coming up in my face. And we're just going to beat it until it starts to form a ball. Okay, we are done. As you can see, shortbread cookies are really, you know, easy to make. And only if you're using unsalted butter, there's only four ingredients. So. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll this into a log. I mean, you can, with shortbread dough, you can roll it out and, you know, cut it, get some cookie cutters out and do it in different shapes. But today, I'm just gonna roll it into a log, do a slice and bake. And the great part about that is once you make your log and put it in the fridge, you can leave it there for oh, three days, three, four days, or you can even freeze the log. And then, you know, when you want to make cookies, just take it out, slice and bake. It's a good thing about 
shortbread. Very versatile. And they are excellent plain. I mean, today we're going to really dress them up, but they are good just on their own. So now, gather that up, and I'm going to roll this into a 7-inch log. That's 18 centimeters. I'm just going to put a little flour down. Kind of bring it together. And so you might get a knife, or knife, a ruler. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And once we get it into the shape, I'm going to put it in plastic wrap and put it into the refrigerator to chill. Probably three, four hours. Like I said, you could make them three, four days ahead of time and then just leave the log in the fridge. But what I find is once I get it into the shape I want, it kind of, when you put it in the fridge, because the dough is quite soft, it'll settle down and kind of flatten on the bottom. So after about a half hour, take it out and re-roll it, especially if you want it in um, a circle around, then, you know, it tends to flatten. So I'm thinking that's about, that's about right. Because it's quite warm in here, so my uh, dough is quite soft. That's about right. So I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to wrap it in, you can do plastic wrap, you can use parchment paper, wax paper, and I'm going to roll it up like this, put it into the refrigerator, like I said, to chill, probably three, four hours, but I'm going to take it out after a half an hour, just re-roll it, get it like in the round, hopefully, <laughs> sometimes an oblong um, or an oval, um, in a round shape, and then when we come back, we will slice them off and bake them. So now my shortbread is really cold, so I'm ready to slice and bake. So you will need a baking sheet, line it with parchment paper like I've done here, or you could just lightly butter or oil your baking sheet. And then take your uh, log, you'll need a ruler and a sharp knife. Put my glasses on. And we're gonna um, slice it into a quarter inch thick cookies, which is about half a centimeter. So I take my ruler, and just put it on there and just, you know, put little notches all the way along and then just slice it down like so. And then I'm putting 12 on here. So you can just bake as many or as little as you want. Cause like I said, if you didn't want to bake them all off, then you could just, you know, leave your, uh, the rest of the log in the fridge, or you could even put it in the freezer, like a couple months. So what I'm going to do now, because every time you work shortbread, you want to make sure it's nice and cold when you put it into the oven, and that way it'll, it uh, will stay at shape, otherwise they can spread. So what I'm going to do is put this back into the refrigerator to chill while I preheat my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius, and it takes about 15 minutes for my oven to preheat. So that's about a good amount of time for this to chill off. And then when we come back, we will bake them off. So now we're ready to bake our shortbread. Everyone's oven is a little different. So I'm going to say 13 to 15 minutes. Rotate your baking sheet front to back about halfway through to get even baking. But what you're looking for, I like a nice crisp shortbread for a couple of reasons. I think that's the way shortbread should taste. But two, we're going to put that uh, powdered sugar glaze on top. So we want a nice crisp cookie so it doesn't soften too much when you put the glaze on there. So what I'm looking for is the outside of the cookie to get like almost a golden brown. So that would take between 13 and 15 minutes. Okay, so our shortbread cookies are done. So put your baking sheet on a wire rack. So this is what you're looking for. Nicely brown around the edges. 
So what I'm going to do, because they're a little soft when they first come out of the oven, I'm going to let them uh, cool down maybe five minutes like this, and then I'll use my spatula to transfer them to a wire rack to finish cooling because we want them at room temperature. And then when we come back, we will make our glaze and finish off our cookies. So now our cookies have cooled down to room temperature, so we're ready to make our glaze. This is like a confectioner sugar, powdered sugar glaze. So in a bowl, you will need one cup, which is 115 grams of confectioner sugar. You may know it as powdered or icing sugar. Um, mine's not too bad. If you had a lot of lumps, you could sift it, but mine's not too bad. And then we're going to add somewhere between two to three tablespoons of, you can use either, I'm using half and half today. You could use a light cream, you could use a heavy cream, you could use milk, you know, whatever you have in the house. I'm going to start with about uh, two tablespoons. We want like a spreadable glaze that we can, that'll smooth out on top of our cookies. So I'm going to start with two because it's easier to add than to take away. As I always say, I'm just using a spoon to mix it together. This is all I'm using. If you wanted to flavor your glaze with a little vanilla or s some other um, flavoring, you could do that. But where we're having, topping it with, not only do you have the buttery, crisp shortbread, the flavor of that, we have the sugar flavor, and then we have our pistachios and our free dried raspberries. So, yeah, that's what you're looking for. Just, okay. So we are ready. Now, let's put that aside. Today I'm going to top it with chopped pistachios. These are roasted and to go with the green I'm going to have the freeze-dried raspberries. You could use some um, you know freeze-dried strawberries. There's actually now all kinds of different uh, freeze-dried berries or even fruit you know blueberries. I think the if you had blueberries that would go nice with the red with the green. So typically what I find uh, you can find freeze-dried fruit in most grocery stores. They usually come little things like this. A lot of stores, I notice, grocery stores, are actually doing their own brands. So, you know, you shouldn't have too much trouble. Or you can order online, of course. Amazon, you know, <laughs> get everything there. But, and I really like freeze-dried, as you can see, the raspberry. If you taste it, it has such a concentrated tart raspberry flavor. I just love it. Especially where you have this sweet glaze, that combination. It's wonderful. <laughs> so now, you can just use, I'm just going to use my spoon. You could actually use like an offset spatula, a knife. Just put, I'm just doing a thin layer, not too much. Like I said, it's sweet, of course, that's sugar. You can cover the whole top or, you know, leave a bit of the cookie. I will leave that up to you to decide. I'm going to actually, because I only like a real thin layer. So there we go. And if it flows, you can kind of just shake it to get it nice and even. But, so you have that, and then you just do them all. And then we have, you want to put the uh, pistachios and your raspberries on top while the glaze is still wet so that they stick. Otherwise, if you let that dry and then try to, of course, they just fall off. And you can put as much or as little as you want. And then what I do is I just take my raspberry and just kind of crush them in my fingers. And I'm going to be very generous today because <laughs> I love the raspberries, my favorite. So there you have it. Pistachio or 
raspberry pistachio shortbreads. So what I'm going to do is finish this off. And then what you're going to do is let these air dry. You, we want that glaze to dry. And that could take, you know, depending on the humidity, it can take several hours. So don't rush it, you know. I usually let them sit out for most of the day and make sure that's really nice and uh, firm before I cover them and store them. But I'm going to finish these off and then we'll come back and we'll try one. So I finished decorating all the cookies. Don't they look nice? I think they're almost too pretty to eat, but I will eat one. Um, really nice cookie. This would be, I was thinking, this would be particularly nice at Christmas time with the red and the green and the white, but any time of the year. And like I said, you could change up the nuts. You could change up the freeze-dried fruit. Have some fun with it. So let's try one. Not only do they look really pretty, but they taste so good. You have oh, that buttery, crisp shortbread on the bottom. And we didn't use put too much sugar in there, so they're not like overly sweet. And then we have that glaze, and then the pistachios and the freeze-dried raspberries. Like I said, the, the raspberries, with that nice tart, sweet flavor, goes you know, kind of offsets the sweetness of the uh, glaze. I just, I, you know, I just love everything about these cookies. Um, now, when I ate them, when I ate uh, that, the glaze on the top is, is pretty firm, but underneath is still a little soft. So like I said, you need to let these sit several hours, I think six or maybe longer if it's humid in your uh, kitchen until that glaze really dries all the way through. And that way it won't soften the cookies too much. But what I like to do, I mean, you could put them in a covered container, and let them sit at room temperature, but I find I like to store them in the fridge and that way, you know, they firm up and that the glaze doesn't soften the shortbread. And if you store them in the fridge, I would say a week, probably you can store them. But like I said, if you want the log, you can just make it and freeze that. And then so it's a good do ahead. And then what you can do when you want to make the cookies, just slice them off, bake them, and then decorate them. So it's a great, if you're doing it at Christmas time, a great do ahead cookie. So you must try these. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.